Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, ito po muna ang aking bati sa inyo lahat. Daisies, daisies, daisies sa korbata ko po this morning. Eh, tagal kong uh, parang uh, uh, kaalangan na gamitin ito kasi sobrang cute, sobrang dainty. Pero <laughs> lately, uh, my mood has been better. So, happier and uh, yan. Daisies, daisies, daisies. Uh, good morning, magandang araw po, and good evening sa kabilang uh, pahagi ng mundo po natin where we have uh, people who tune, tune in also, Filipinos and uh, our foreign friends. Uh, and uh, uh, evening po uh, doon, uh, afternoon siguro sa Middle East where we also have our friends there. And of course, dito sa Asia, kaya pa rin ang araw. Ano, and... Uh, So, um, nandiyan po uh, sa screen po ninyo, bati muna, uh, pakinggan po natin ang bati ni Maestro Ana and uh, Maestro Ado. Good morning, Ana and Ado. Ah, good morning, Ado. I like to buy the way. Ado, too. Oh, maganda mga kasi yung lahat mga kabansa. Ito na naman kami, summarizing all the... Uh, No all and foreign affairs uh, issues of the week para sa inyong kalulugdan ang maestro te, ang maestro at ang maestra <laughs> Hala <laughs> Okay, okay. Magandang umaga po sa ating mga taga-subaybay Andito po ang ating Sunday edition ng ang maestro at kasama po ako dyan ang maestra At huwag po kayong uh, aalis at marami po tayong tatalakayin at the same time, may, mga panau may panauhin po tayong um, may enter yes. sa si, uh, ginoong Francis Chu, one of the uh, Hall of Famers no? dito sa yeah. first uh, APCO Awards. Uh, uh, AP award <laughs> with APPCU up, uh, Award for uh, Promotion of uh, Philippine-China Understanding. You know? And uh, Francis Chua, who is a uh, former ambassador to, to Beijing and uh, the Philippines, I think, you know, and uh, a very, very successful uh, businessman here in the Philippines. Anna, you do the honors of uh, inviting our guest, uh, Mr. Francis Chua, a uh, very uh, instrumental uh, figure in Philippine-China relations and, of course, a very big uh, man in Philippine business. Uh, Anna, please do the honors. Yes po. Um, good after, uh, good morning po sa ating mga kabansa at mga nakikinig po at mga sa audience po natin sa National Radio at sa Facebook live live stream and also in YouTube. No, um, ako po ang mag-introduce sa ating um, panauhin right now. So before I call him into the um, our Zoom um, uh, window, um, let me introduce no our guest. Um, our guest is Ambassador Francis Chua. He, he is actually right now uh, one of the two Hall of Fame, famer, sa nalunsad na awards for promoting Philippine-China understanding or APPCU ng APCU or ng Association for the Promotion of Philippine-China Understanding and also of the Chinese Embassy in Manila. So let me introduce him. Ambassador Francis Chua is the Chairman Emeritus of the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry. He is also the Honorary President of the Federation of Philippine Chinese Chamber of Commerce and Industry Incorporation. He founded the International Chamber of Commerce in the Philippines in 2015 and served as the first president. In the same year, he was elected as Chairman Emeritus of the Employers Federation of the Philippines. In 2015, he was appointed as the Vice Chairman of the Silk Road International Chamber of Commerce. And in 2016, he established the Philippine Silk Road International Chamber of Commerce as the founding chairman. He was successful in the importation of dump trucks and automobile chassis from China to the Philippines in 1983. He also signed a memorandum of cooperation with Chinese counterparts for launching the first international communication satellites for the Philippines in 1993. In 1997, the Philippines first international communication and broadcasting satellite was successfully launched by Chinese on March the 3rd rocket in Xinjiang, China. Hindi ko alam kung tama ang pronunciation ko ng Xinjiang, China. 
Ambassador Francis Chua was also appointed by President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo as a member of the Constitutional Advisory Committee and as the Philippines Special Envoy for Investment and Trade in 2006. His achievements in solving anti-Chinese incident that suppressed the rampant kidnapping cases of, the, of Chinese nationals paved the way for him to become the commissioner of the Anti-Organized Crime Committee by then during the time of President Arroyo. Ambassador Francis Chua was also instrumental in the crafting of an executive order allowing foreigners who invest in the Philippines to obtain permanent residence visas during President Arroyo's time. This policy did not only pave the way for the removal of Chinese nationals from the list of restricted aliens, but also facilitated the granting of permanent residency to 50 Chinese nationals each year in the Philippines. With the efforts of Ambassador Francis Chua, he helped the FFCCII obtain the rights to host the 10th World Chinese Entrepreneur Conference and serve as chairman of the organizing committee. The conference was successfully held in November 2009 and was highly praised by more than 3,000 Chinese businessmen who participated in the conference from various parts of the world. Furthermore, Ambassador Chua collaborated with Fujian Normal University to establish the Philippine Institute of Chinese Language and Culture and was the first dean of that institute. He also helped the University of the Philippines and Angeles University establish the Confucius Institutes. One of our one of um, the awardees that we interviewed is, was actually Dr. Nepomuceno, who is the director of the UP Diliman um, Confucius Institute. No? Ambassador Francis Chua believes that the Belt and Road Initiative, or BRI, is the sum of China's connection with the rest of the world and is the Chinese way of promoting trade, cooperation, and bilateral relations. He is more than willing to cooperate with China to tell our Filipino brothers the good story of China, their efforts on peace, and how China is a country that cares for its people and the whole of mankind. Ladies and gentlemen, mga kababayan ng ating pong panauhin, pangdangal sa ating programa ngayon, Ambassador Francis Chua. Good morning, sir. And you can you may greet po our audience before we start the questions. Good morning po sa inyong lahat. Ako po'y nasasalamat sa lahat ng matandang salita po ninyo tungkol sa ating uh, I think uh, what you talk about is more than what I accomplished. And I did the honor that I'll be invited to your program. And I hope I could share with you a little bit of knowledge that I have. Maraming salamat po. Okay, uh, Mr. Francis Chua, what, uh, you're a big businessman, you make a lot of money, but why? Uh, did you uh, find time and how did you find time to do this service uh, of improving, promoting relations uh, between China and the Philippines? And you brought in a lot of very essential uh, businesses and services such as satellite service and so on to the Philippines. How do you manage to do this? Uh, sir, get in uh, I, I divided my life into different my, my stories. I devoted 20 years of my life to study. Escuela, hanggang natapos po ako sa UP. Then after that, I devoted another 20 years of my life to business. And after business, I was telling myself, ang buhay ho naman, eh hindi naman lagi para sa atin ang sarili. So we will have to go out tulong natin po yung kapwa kung sino ho ang lapad natin po tulong. Eh ako po naman, nandito po sa Pilipinas, eh iniisip ko, mabuti na makakatong tayo ng magandang relationship po between Philippines and China. After all, pinakamalapit po ang dalong bansa natin. And for centuries, ang relasyon po natin sa China at Pilipinas po, eh, maganda po naman. At mga language ho natin, ang makuturan mo natin, in-adaptin natin ang Chinese. On the same account, ang Chinese po naman, ina-accept din naman yung kutura natin. Kaya sa katutuhanan naman, sir, pagmasdan mo, there are a lot of inter 
marriage between Chinese and the Filipino. So para sa amin, tayo ay isang pamilya. Wala namang pagkakaiba, whether you are Chinese, whether you are Filipino, pare-pareho naman tayo. Uh, kaya ka ako, sige, kung may panahon ako, i-divod natin para sa kakudararan ng dalawang bansa. Ano yun? Ano yun ba ni question? Ako, Ado? Yeah. Uh, ako po may isa pong question po para kay Ambassador Francis Chua. Sir, um, pa, how it feels po na kayo po ay isa sa mga Hall of Famer po ng ating Association uh, Award for Promoting Philippine-China Understanding or APPCU. Yung isa po nating Hall of Fame ay si Madam Imelda Marcos po. Um, what do you think, sir, is the significance of this to you as one person who been advocating or been doing in your own capacity po promoting the re the good relation and the people to people ties of the two countries po um sa totoo lang po i'm humbled by this award kasi marami po naman sa atin nakikilog and there's so many unsung hero na hindi yun natin nabigyan pansin Kaya nung minigay sa akin itong award, tapo, mali ho yata yan. Kaya lapat, ibigay natin naman sa, sa karamihan yung talagang tubutulong. Alam ko nga ho, nagtutulong ako. Pero naman, to give me such award, sa totoo lang, gusto ko nga itanggi. Kaya lang, sabi ng mga kaibigan ko, Francis, eh, you are from the from the embassy, uh, you are diplomat. Kung gagawin mo yun, it's so undiplomatic. Kaya kahit mapapano, tangkap na. Kaya sabi ko sa inyo, ma'am, sir, kahit mga ko ay nagtutuwa, pero palagay ko naman eh, ano, nahiya rin naman ako tungkol ko siya. Yun ang mga. Sir, you deserve to be one of the Hall of Fame because I've, 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 I've seen your credentials. I've seen what you have done for the two countries to get closer. Nakita ko po yun at alam ko po na you deserve it. And at saka sir, yung iba naman po na deserving din. May ano naman po ang APPCU. Every year we have to uh, give recognition to our like someone like you po. So in another, like next year, meron pa po tayo niyan. So pero po, I mean, from 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 the organizer, I think I think you deserve it, sir. Kaya na, na, natutuwa po kami na kayo po ay isa sa mga Hall of Fame kasi kayo po ay magsisilbing inspiration po sa ating mga kababayan po. Oh. Kato, do you have a... Yeah. Okay po, sir. Very, very malalim na malalim ang uh damdamin ani uh, tinuong uh, Francis Chua no sa kanyang uh, pag-iisip tungkol dito sa mga issue na to makikita natin ma uh, naririnig natin na binibigkas niya uh, at yung uh, pagka-Pilipino ng salita niya uh, may tanong lang ako eh, uh, si Ginoong Francis Chua ba are you a first second generation uh, uh, Filipino are you were you born here or are you born in China What's your history? Okay, sir. Uh, alam ko din sir. I I was born in China. Sa totoo lang, I was born in China. Uh, I left China at the age of four. Four? Four years old? Four, uh, uh, four, four years old. <laughs> okay, baby pa. Huh? Baby pa. Uh -huh. uh, kasi at that time, wala naman straight biyahe between China and uh, in Philippines or Hong Kong. So, the first turning point is in Hong Kong. Uh, sa totoo lang, sir, at, at that time, at that time, and even up to the 80s, marami po galing sa China. Dumadaan po muna sa Hong Kong bagong punta dito. At yung mga nakilala po natin ng Filipino Chinese, Except those pinag-anap po dito sa Pilipinas, ang karamihan, yan ang ruta. No? Umadaan po sa Hong Kong, bago po pumunta sa Pilipinas. Kaya, pasensya na po kayo, yung Pilipino ko ay medyo baloktot because <laughs> hindi naman ako buwan sa Pilipinas. No? So, uh, when I speak, mahalata mo kakat, 
talagang hindi tubong Pinoy yan. Okay. Uh, Kaado, you have any uh, question? Yeah. Uh, Sir Francis, uh, yes, sir. We, are facing, we are facing an election soon. Uh, sa mga nangyari na sa uh, Duterte term, Eh, ano po ang vision ninyo sa Philippine-China cooperation beyond the Duterte term sa para sa next administration? Ano pa ang areas na pwede nating idagdag sa ating uh, pakikitungo sa isa't isa? Areas of cooperation. Uh, alam po dito, sir. Marami pong misinformation ang nangyari po sa society natin. Maraming kong gawain na mabuti at aklapas naman po sa media naging iba. Uh, palakay ko naman ang may pakukulang eh, eh, sa China also. I have to say, I have to be brutally frank. Uh, ever since China insists in this so-called nine last time sa South China Sea. And ito po bring another tension, not only another, so much tension. Kahit po yung nakaibigan ko, sa community, sa UP, masama ang loob nila Ang feeling nila, bakit naman ninyo inaangkin itong South China Sea? Ang katotohanan sa, I'm not speaking for anybody. I'm just saying that this so-called territorial dispute, it happens anywhere around the world. I represent Peru as a Consul General of Peru, dito sa Pilipinas. Kami po sa Peru, alam po ninyo ang kaaway namin, Chile. Territorial dispute. Lagi, lagi na inaakway. Okay. Ito po ba ay may meaningful event? Wala po naman eh. Pag-away kayo, hindi mo naman pwede makuha yung, yung dagat. Makuha mo naman ng Chinese yung dagat? Impossible. Nobody could control that big body of water. So, lagi ko nga sinasabi sa mga kasama o China, sa mga industry, yung mga mga bagay ng kanya, huwag na po natin ibibigin. We have to find ways and means to diffuse it. Dapat po malaman ng Pilipino na ang China eh walang iniisip na salakayin ang Pilipinas. Walang iniisip na ano ba yung mga island na yan ang kukunin ng Chinese. Bakit mo bang kukunin yung island? Talaki-laki yung lote ninyo. Hindi naman ba ubos-ubos. The same thing na sa Pilipinas. Hindi din yung kami nakukulang din sa lote. Ang problema natin sa daming misinformation sa marami hong na umuudyo kaya naging masama yung kalooban ng mga kapwa natin. Kaya sa inyo po, ako po'y nakikiusap kung pwede lang po sana mapalating po natin sa mga nating kapwa ang Pilipino at ako naman sa mga Chinese na huwag na po natin idiin itong issue na yan. Pausapan natin kung paano tayo makakatulong-tulong sa isa-isa. Kung dito sa covid ang China nakabigay sa atin ng marami vaccine. Ito po, eh hindi ho lumalabas na maigi. Ang parating lumalabas, eh China naman, yung kinukontrol nila yung South China Sea. So, yung magandang gawain ng China, eh nakocover dito sa issue ng South China Sea. Kung pwede na po, we use our connection, the media. Sabi lang natin ang katotohanan kung ano po anong yari. We don't have to say 
sino ang mabuti, sino ang hindi mabuti. No? Tingnan na ho natin, ma'am. Recently, ever since yung COVID, sinong bansa nakapakitay sa atin na pinakamarami? Doctor, medicine, PPE, face mask, face shield. Sino po nakapakitay sa atin na up to now, pinakamarami vaccine? Sinong nakapakitay sa atin na pinaka-earliest yung mga vaccine? Malaman ng mga kapwa natin yung totohanan. Ito kung pwede sana ma'am, i-promote natin the truth. Natin pa the truth. Salamat po. Okay, and uh, Mr. Francis Trapp, before I hand over the microphone to uh, Madam Anna for the final question, tanong ko lang at this time, and by the way, yung Tagalog mo, mas malalim kayo sa akin. Nagagamit ko yung salitang kalooban, eh nakalimutan ko na kalooban. That is the right word I was looking for nung sinabi kong damdamin kanya, kalooban. Kaling talaga sa kalooban ni eh, Ginoong Francis Cho, yung mga sinasabi niya. But um, anong nakikita mo for the next 5-10 years sa Philippine-China relations? At anong uh, hopeful ka ba? Maganda ba ang kinabukasan? Uh, yan, ang, yan ang tanong ng maraming Pilipino. Yeah. Whether I could be hopeful or not, Ipindi po sa mga kapatid ko natin sa media. Ang marami hong pangyayari, eh hindi ho kung ano ang katotohan. Ang pangyayari, sana, pagtulong ng media sa atin, paganda ho ang pag-ibisor. Pag iba naman sinasabi ng media, talaga walang mangyayari ito sa relasyon. So kahit mang gano kaganda ang ginagawa ng China, kahit ibang ano kaganda ang ginagawa natin lahat, baka ang media as a whole ay eh against po sa China. The truth is, we will reach natin. Wala ako tao tayong matutubo. Ito na po. Lahat po na ito ay eh naka depend sa palikat ng, ng media. Kaya ito, sir, if you ask me, ang sagot ko lang, hindi po, wala po tayo magagawa. Ang may magawa lang po dito, eh ang mga kapatid po natin sa media. Ana? Okay. Um, sir, um, ito po yung pang, uh, panghuli or last question ko po, and you can also make it like your last remark po for, for this interview po. Um, sir, how important is people-to-people -people ties? between the two nations po at yung importansya din po ng state to state level na relasyon po ng ating bansa sa China po ngayon given na ang China po ay isa sa pinaka nagbubung na ekonomiya ng ating mundo at saka yung panghuling ano po natin mensahe sa ating mga kababayan bilang isang uh, awardee po ng APPCU at congratulations sir and you deserve to be one of the whole of the one of the whole of famer awards awardee ng ating APPCU. Thank you po for giving me this opportunity. Mga kapatid, mga magulang po natin ng Pilipino at Chinese. Tayo po ay isang lahi. Pare-pareho po tayong tulay dilaw. Ang isip po natin ay e pareho. Tanungin mo ang mga kabataan ngayon ng mga Chinese. Ang isip nila ay e isip Pilipino. Tayo po ay e iba sa pagkat ang kultura po natin ay e pare-pareho. For centuries, ang Pilipinas at Chinese. At tulong-tulong tayo lahat. Pero, yung mga pangyayari na hindi ho natin makokontrol. May mga salita, may mga fake news na kakasira po sa relationship po natin. Ang importante lang naman, itingnan naman natin Buksan natin ang mata natin. 
mag-isip tayo na mabuti sino hong bansa ang totoo na kapagbigay ng tulong po sa atin. Hindi ho dyan sa media campaign. Hindi ho dyan sa salita lang. Tingnan ho natin ang katotohanan. Kung ang China ay talagang nasa ba. Kung sinasabi ho natin ang China sinisiraan yung fishing boat. Sa totoo lang po, yung fishing boat na pinakita ho sa, sa TV, yung mga kahoy na nubulutang, hindi ho yun ang galing sa fishing boat. At mapangako po sa inyo, yung nangyari pa, yung pagkakataon, kami po, kayo mga PCCI, Philippine Chamber, lumabas kami ng pera para magbigay sa mga fishermen ng bago fishing boat. Pero lumapit sa akin ang Federation Francis. Kami na lang kasi yung Chinese ang may kasalanan. So, they paid it. Pinigay na bagong fishing boat and yung ilan linggo at yung buwan na wala silang hanap buhay, binabayaran ko lahat. So, ang pakiusap ko lang, anytime na meron hong anong problema, makuha natin ang katotohanan. Kasi, minsan ang katotohanan ay hindi ho nungulutak, hindi ho ipinapairap ang dumalating ng po ay puro mga fake news. So, I hope that we could treat each other. Para mga kapatid, na makuusap tayo ng heart to heart kung meron man kung anong klase para at kami laman ay eh handang magtulong hanggang kaya. Anytime po, salamat po sa inyo lahat. Okay. Maraming maraming Thank salamat, you, uh, Mr. Francis Schwab. Pasasalamat niyo, Kaado. And, uh, Anna. Okay po. Maraming salamat, Ambassador um, Francis Chua, for this opportunity na nagkaroon po tayo ng panayam sa inyo. At congratulations ulit. I'll see you po sa August 6. Ah, ka -ka ko awardis niyo po pala si Ka Mentong at Ka Ado din. Um, oh. They're also part of the awards. Congratulations. Salamat po. More power. More power to you, to you po. Thank you. Salamat po. Thank you po. Thank you po. Yung po si Ginoong Francis Choa. You know, and uh, uh, talagang malalim, makaado, and, um, uh, uh, yung kanyang uh, pagbibigkas ng kanyang damdamin tungkol dito sa mga issue na ito. No? So kahit na baluktot yung Tagalog niya, piling-pili din ang mga salita niyang Pilipino. Ano? So, Opo. Okay. Anyway, that was a nice interview. Ang ano ko lang po, ang isa lang na, na gusto ko pong i-emphasize dun sa interview is, Tama po si ano si Ambassador Francis Chua. Lahat tayo ay isang lahi at tayo ay magkakapatid at dapat ang pairali natin ay yung understanding at pagkakaibigan. At yun nga at ang katotohanan po sana sa dalawang bansang may relasyon ay maipalabas at hindi lang mga fake news. Doon po ako na touch sa ating interview po kay uh, well, Ambassador. Well, iba yun ang lagi kong pinapaliwanag na sa anthropology, is a history, ha. Huh? Eh, ang Southeast Asian nations were populated through Taiwan at galing sa main, mainland, South, uh, South Mainland Asia. At in behalf of Kaana and Kaado, uh, magpapaalam na po kami kasi uh, we are two minutes over time. Bye-bye! We know you're always on the go. On the go. Pero ang mahuli sa balita is always a big no-no. Kaya, Radio Pilipinas.